unless I fundamentally change, the future will be what I am now. Right? See the, the truth of this simple fact. Not I am persuading you, not that you are being told or pressurised or computerised. This is a simple fact. If I am vicious, cruel, brutal today, as I have been in the past, I will be that tomorrow. You can't get away from it. If I am quarrelling with my wife or husband and so on, I will do it tomorrow too. So tomorrow is now. And to break this chain in which we are caught is I have to ch- there must be a mutation now. The noted author, educator, and philosopher J. Krishnamurti questioned if it is possible to move out of the shadow of myth and tradition into the light of a different way of living. Throughout his life, He suggested that to understand the present, we must remove the blinders of old patterns of thinking. We must be willing to look, listen, and change. We must move beyond the past, move beyond myth and tradition. This implies radical change in our lives. Krishnamurti suggested that lasting change must take place now, in the immediate present. He challenged the idea that outward changes in society, in political or religious systems, could transform humanity. Krishnamurti on change. What is the energy, the drive, the intensity that will make us change? Outside pressure, obviously, has not done it. Right? That's very clear. Is that clear to you? By changing society, you are not going to be changed, because you have created the society. Is that clear? We have made this society what it is. Wars, killing each other for some national prestige, honour, for a piece of land. Do you understand what I know? What will make us change? More knowledge about yourself? More knowledge of the world outside of us? Knowledge that we must not kill, and we kill. We have accumulated thousands of years of knowledge which has helped us to kill people. And also we have knowledge that we shouldn't kill. What's, what, where does it lead us? So what will make us change? What will not change? What will make us transform? What will make us end this terrible confusion, sorrow, pain, anxiety, lonely, all that? End. Tears. We have cried enough. Sorrow, nothing outside. I wonder if we realise that. No gods, no saviours, no external force agencies ever going to change us. We are much too clever for all that. Much too cunning.
the way we live, let's change it. Well, we can say that. Many people have said it. I know many people have said it. But without very much effect. Why? Well, that indeed is a question. Is it that we're so completely trapped in our oh, so the ancestry of the past? Or so heavily conditioned that it's impossible to be free? Well, there are two the possible kinds of conditioning. One is the genuine biological conditioning that comes from our animal heritage, which means that we inherit all these tendencies. Uh, uh, let's accept that. Um, now, that is undoubtedly extremely strong and goes right back into our animal past. Right. The other kind of conditioning is the kind of argument that I'm putting forward, perhaps. The argument, this has always been so. so? Human nature is like this. There have always been wars and conflict and all that kind of thing. And therefore, there always will be. And that the most we can do is try to minimize these. And that there will always be psychological conflicts within families and between people. And that the most we can do is try and minimize yes. these, or so at least make the them livable. Accept the modify it, mm. but you cannot fundamentally change it. Yes, I'm saying this is a possible kind of conditioning. The belief that we can't really change it radically is another kind of conditioning. I'm a victim of it myself. <laughs> 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 so, I don't know if it's possible to get out of it. And that's what I want to discuss. Mm -hmm. Whether it's possible to change the human condition mm -hmm. and not accept it. But one of my points, to go back to the conditioning point, is that a lot of this conditioning is deep in our biological nature. And if we start off with a heritage which is mm -hmm. built into us, inherited, which comes from our biological past. And if we start with that, and we start with these societies that also have bad effects, some of them, and to varying degrees, and we just try to change the society, the other part, the inherited part, is still there. And we... Why do you divide, if I may ask, hmm. society and being? As though society was something outside, which is influencing me, hmm. conditioning me, but I have my parents, grandparents, mm. so on, past generations have created that society. Mm. So I'm part of that society. I am society. I am the world. I am the result of all these influences, conditioning, whether in the East or in the West or in South mm. or North. It's all part of conditioning. Yes. So I, we are attacking the conditioning, not where you are born or East or West. Oh, yes. The problem would be conditioning of every kind, our biological conditioning, our conditioning yeah, from that's society. Right. That's right. Yes. So, I'm asking, I'm conditioned that way. Mm. Is it not possible to be free of it? Free of my conditioning? If you say, it's not possible, then it's finished. Mr. Krishnamurti, I was very taken uh, with a recent statement of yours uh, in which uh, you said that it's the responsibility of each human being to bring about his own transformation, which is not dependent on knowledge or time. What place has knowledge in the regeneration of man? in the transformation of man, in the fundamental, radical movement in man. What place has knowledge, and therefore time? Fine. Is that what you're asking? Yes, me? yes I am, because 
Either we accept that a change that is a genuine change means the annihilation of what preceded, or we're talking about a total transformation of something that abides. Yes. So let us look at that word for a minute. Good. A revolution, in the ordinary sense of that word, means, doesn't it, not an evo evolution, a gradual evolution. It's a revolution. No, it doesn't mean that. Then. Right. I agree. Mm. A revolution is generally meant, uh, if, it, if you talk to a communist, he wants to overthrow the government. If you talk to a, a bourgeois, he's frightened. Mm -hmm. If you talk to an intellectual, he has various um, uh, criticisms about revolution. Now, a revolution is either bloody, mm, yes, or revolution in the psyche. Yes. Outward or inner? Outward or inner. The outward is the inner. Yes. The inner is the outward. There is not the difference between the outer and the inner. They are totally related to each other. And this goes back to what you mentioned earlier, that there's no division, even though intellectually you make a distinction, distinction. Here, That's right. between the, the I, I and the we. we. That's right. Yes, of course. So, when we talk about change, we, are, we mean not the mere bloody revolution, physical revolution, but rather the revolution in the makeup of the mind. Of each person. Of, of human beings. Right. Mm -hmm. The way he thinks, the way he behaves, the way he conducts himself, the way he operates, he functions, the, the whole of that. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that psychological revolution, not evolution in a sense, gradualness. No. What place has knowledge in that? What place has knowledge in something that in, occurs? In the in the regeneration of man, which is the revolution, the inward revolution, which, is which not will a, affect the outer. Yes, yeah, which is not a gradual progress. No, obviously, no, that's right. the gradual process is endless. Exactly. So we're talking about an instant qualitative change. When we are discussing change, we must be, I think, fairly clear that we mean the change in the psyche, in the very being of human beings. That is, in the very structure and nature of his thought. A change at the root. At the root. That's at the root itself. The root. And therefore, when there is that change, he will naturally bring about a change in society. It isn't society first, individual or individual first. It is the human change which will transform the society. They are not two separate things. Human beings have created this society by their greed, by their anger, by their violence, by their brutality, by their pettiness. They have created this society. Precisely. And they think by changing the structure, you are going to change the human being. This has been the communist problem. This has been the, um, the eternal problem. That is, change the environment, then you change man. They have tried that in ten different ways, and they haven't done it, succeeded in changing man. On the contrary, man super conquers the environment, the structure. So, if we are clear that the outer is the inner, the inner is the outer, that there is not the division, the society and the individual, the collective and the um, the separate human being, but their human being is the whole. He is the society, he is the separate human individual, he is the factor which brings about this chaos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'm, I'm following that very he closely. He is the world, and the world is him. 
Yes. Therefore, yeah. if he changes, Indeed, the whole thing everything is right. changes. If he doesn't change, the thing nothing right. changes. Right. If we accept that, if we see that, not intellectually, but feel it in your heart, in your mind, in your blood that you are that, then the question, is it possible for a human being to transform himself inwardly and therefore outwardly? From that arises the question, <coughs> can the human mind, which has been so conditioned for millennia, can that human mind, which has acquired so much knowledge mm -hmm. yes. in so many directions, can that human mind change, bring about a regeneration in itself and be free to reincarnate now? Now. Now. Yes. That is the... Qu That's the question. Question would... Exactly. Reincarnate. Now. Now. Can we be a light to ourselves? Not dependent psychologically on anyone. Action that will not breed conflict, regret, sorrow, pain inwardly. You understand? Can we understand ourselves so completely? Or is that not possible? We have never tried. We have tried everything else. We have gone to the moon, invented most marvellous machines, Extraordinary surgical instruments. We have got the brain has got extraordinary capacity. But that capacity we have never applied to ourselves. Because we have always asked for someone else to help us. That's what you're doing here now. Uh, when I'm, the speaker is not helping you, he's not teaching you. We are saying, look at yourself. We've got the capacity, the energy, the suffi sufficient intelligence to go into ourselves, look at ourselves face ourselves, never escaping from ourselves. We have got all the energy to do that. Think what, ne what energy is needed to go to the moon. You understand, sir? Enormous cooperative energy, drive. But apparently, when it comes to us, 
we kind of become slack. We wither. And it's, we hope somebody will water, give us water that will bring us again to health. Nobody is going to give it to you. That's one absolute fact, irrefutable fact. Because we have had leaders, we have had teachers, we have had saviours, we have had every kind of outside agency. Infinite information about ourselves from, from others. And all that has not freed us from fear. And so, out of our laziness, out of our indifference, out of our callousness, we invent gods and all the rest of it. And the misfortune is, we are because we don't know ourselves, we're destroying our destroying other human beings. We're destroying this marvelous earth. Culture is different from civilization. Culture implies growth. Hmm? Oh yes. Hmm? Oh yes. Now, growth in the flowering of goodness. A lovely phrase. Lovely phrase. That is hmm. that is culture. The flowering Real culture. Of the flowering in goodness. You understand, sir? Yes. And that doesn't exist. We have civilization. You can travel from India to um, America in a few hours. You have better bathrooms, better this and better that, and so on, with all the complications that it involves. That has been the Western culture which is absorbing the East now. So, the goodness is, is the very essence of culture. Mm -hmm. Religion is the transformation of man. Not all the belief, churches, and, and the idolatry of the, of the Christians or the Hindus. That's not religion. So we come back to the point, if one sees all this in this world, observes it, not condemn it or justify it, just to observe it, then from that one asks, man has collected such enormous information, knowledge, and has that knowledge trans changed him into goodness? You follow me? Into, oh, yes. into, I follow. into a culture that makes him flower in this beauty of goodness. It has not. No, it has not. Uh, Therefore, it has, it has no meaning. So, we come back again. Yes, yes, let's do. Personally, I'm tremendously concerned with this question. How to change man? Because I go to India every year for three months or five months, and I see what's happening there, and I see what's happening in Europe, I see what's happening in this country, America, and it's something I can't tell you what shock it gives me each time I come to these countries. The degeneration, the, the superficiality, the intellectual concepts galore. 
without any substance, without any basis or ground in which the beauty of some of goodness of reality can grow. Now, so <laughs> saying all that, what place has knowledge in the regeneration of man? That is the basic question. 